Hey, we are finally back with another Twisted Metal game. Uh, what? What do you mean it's not Twisted Metal? It's made by the same guys. Huh? Well, okay then. Hey, we are back with another game that is not Twisted Metal. A lot of you ask me to take a look at games that are like Twisted Metal, but aren't. This might become a small series of videos because I know there's other games to look at like Vigilante 8 and Second Defense, but if you have any tips I will happily take them in the comments. Today we're gonna talk about two games by the developers of the original two Twisted Metal games, Rogue Trip and Critical Death. I will be talking about them in the wrong order though, because I play them in the wrong order. Don't blame me, blame them for not making it clear for me to understand it 20 years later. Rogue Trip Vacation 2012 is a game released for the PlayStation in 1998. The story takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where the earth is completely destroyed. A guy named Big Daddy controls the economy by selling trips to his many different resorts. So some mercenaries start selling trips for a cheaper price and you play as one of these mercenaries, fighting your opponents for the tourists and bringing them to places that they can take pictures for money. And that's also the uh, <coughs> twist in the gameplay. Everything here is basically where we left off in Twisted Metal 2. You can use square for gas, X for a fast turn, circle for braking, and triangle for shooting backwards, but now with the addition of pressing gas twice to boost. <sighs> Great, you know how much I love that if you saw my Twisted Metal 3 and 4 video. Though you only boost if you press square twice, up doesn't count, so it's all good with me. You can also press L1 and R1 to jump, which I didn't even knew at first, but it can be very useful, especially later in the game when it gets harder. About the twist I mentioned before, in this game you also have money management. A tourist will spawn somewhere on the map and you gotta fight the others for it. Whoever carries the tourist constantly gets money, which can be used in gates like this for health and weapons. I will already tell you though, and you can judge me for this, but I have no idea how to use the weapon upgrades in this. The tutorial says that I have to stop here to get upgrades, and I tried, but there must be something I'm missing here because nothing happens. But maybe I'm just dumb. The graphics here are basically the same as in Twisted Metal 2, though I saw some people saying it's better. I don't know if I agree. They have some reflections in the water that look alright I guess, but nothing too crazy. However, I think the game kind of misses me with the art style and setting. This might be a just not for me thing, because I was expecting something a bit more serious, but it's just way too... haha, <laughs> we're funny, right guys? So self-aware but not at the same time. I mean, there's this guy which his whole deal is dick jokes. His name is Dick Biggs, he drives the meat wagon, his special weapon is the Winnie Wacker, and... Uh, okay. That might have been funny, but still, I don't think there's any really memorable characters. And it might have helped it be overshadowed by Twisted Metal. You have Ratman, Legs, Sister Mary, and I don't even think there's a really leading character for the cover. And the worst offender to me. After you beat this game, there's just nothing. Remember how I mentioned how cool it was to see the stories in Twisted Metal games? Here, you do get a character bio, but the ending is always the same thing. You get a trophy and a password to unlock cheats, and that's it. It really sucks to see. These are the same people who made these crazy endings for Twisted Metal 1 and 2, so what happened here? Oh, and for the soundtrack, it's not really what I was expecting. This is the song that plays in the menu. And you then get to the first level and hear... Is, is that is that Ska? Alright. But then you get to the second level and... Uh, hip Hop? And then Heavy Metal and so on. I don't really see a problem with that when you do music that matches the level and its setting. But you have a copyrighted song at first, then some music made for the game, and some more copyrighted music, and then I think they ran out of money and just ended up making their own music. And it doesn't really fit the levels either. If anything, it brings you out of the game because there's no transition. The music completely stops every time it ends and start playing it again. 
It's at least weird because it's definitely some lack of attention for the presentation of the music. Don't get me wrong though, I'm being pretty critical of the game because I expected this to be a better version of Twisted Metal than no one talked about. I guess that's on me though because the devs weren't working with Sony anymore, but with GT Interactive at the time. The game is still very fun to play. The same gameplay is here, and a lot of the levels are actually really good. I mean, really good, like Neon Nightmare. I think the layout perfectly fits the type of gameplay this game pushes and it ended up being my favorite level in the game but there's also some terrible ones like eternal acres i mean who the hell thought that mountains was a good idea your attacks don't follow the enemies upwards or downwards honestly this level was a miserable experience but again check out neon nightmare love that level in the end you fight big daddy himself it's a pretty hard fight separated into sections. Every time you destroy a part of his vehicle, there is a twist in the gameplay so you will need some patience to beat this one. After you beat him, like I said, small cutscene and a code, that's it. You should play this one with friends. It's probably one of the best games to play multiplayer, because there's 4 player split screen and besides having the same gameplay, it does have a twist to it. And now for Critical Death, my expectations were pretty low. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of water in video games. I usually stay away from any type of game that contains water as one of its main mechanics or features. And considering this one came before Road Trip, I was really not expecting much. However, I somehow really liked this game. Now that's a twist I wasn't expecting. The game starts with a cutscene of a guy finding some alien structures and some green lights start showing up like some kind of real structure. Say again, Kinsman. You're breaking up. Something must be... Whoa! What the hell is that? You tell me. Can you back up a bit, McCraggan? Let's get a better look. Yeah. Hold on. Wait. Something... What's going on down there? Oh! Oh! Holy shit, that was awesome. You start by putting your initials and selecting a character. You have the CIA, the Soviet diehards, the Earth Hope, the Mordred Corporation, and the French. The goddamn French. Again, I think they missed pretty hard with the memorable characters in this one. They fit the game perfectly, don't get me wrong. Each faction has a motive to be going after the alien pods, and they all seem pretty believable. Well, b besides Joe, who just wants the pods because they think they're the bomb, whatever that means. Again, same engine as Twisted Metal, but there's two twists in this game. The most obvious one is that you can go up and down now, so you have more freedom to move around and explore. Don't think this makes this game easier though, it does not. The second twist is that you don't have to destroy everyone anymore. Your objective is to collect all the 5 pods, and when you do, you can get into a portal, or a threshold as they call it, to move on to the next level. Meaning that if you're not paying attention, someone else might get the pods and leave with them. Pods also give you different stats. There's the armor pod, which makes you take less damage. The damage pod, which makes you deal more damage. The power pod, which basically makes you have infinite boost, and so on. I think the graphics here are the best one so far. You have some nice underwater lighting effects, sea creatures are just chilling, a lot of buildings and even a whole construction site. Oh, and something really cool is that you get so into the gameplay sometimes, and I wonder if you could somehow jump above the water. And you actually can, not for a long time, but being underwater for so long and having these few seconds outside to see the sky and just nothing for miles ahead is such a weird feeling. This might be just me and you might have to try it yourself to see if it has the same effect, but it just made me notice how claustrophobic being underwater really is. 10 out of 10. The gameplay is exactly what you would expect, but with a lot more weapons that follow enemies. Probably because it's extremely difficult to hit with weapons that you have to compensate for the distance. But I guess it's just the downside of having this much freedom. The game also rewards exploration a lot, and it's also probably my favorite part of it. The level setting they made here make it so, 
so interesting just to run around and see how far you can go, what's behind stuff, what's above it, what's under it. And again, keep in mind that I'm not a fan of water in video games. I really just have to recommend this game if you like this type of thing. The AI sometimes can be pretty annoying though. I bitched about it in my Twisted Metal video, but the AI sometimes just turn their hatred to 11 and won't stop focusing you for absolutely no reason. There were times where the enemies had 4 pods with them and the others completely ignored it to focus me and don't try to get the pods with everyone alive because they will be after you like your mom after food. It got so stupid at one point that this boss started pushing me over and over again until I couldn't move, the camera glitched and we got out of bounds. Thankfully the AI just stopped working and I was able to finish him. There's also this weapon that I don't even know if it's supposed to be a special weapon or something I didn't find, but it kept flipping me upside down and making me completely stunned. So for the next 5 seconds I simply could not move or shoot, just had to sit there and take whatever damage I was getting spammed with. Trust me, it can get very frustrating at some points. The music here is composed for the game, so no copyrighted songs, and it's actually pretty good, though the quality is pretty bad. I would love to see this remastered, but I don't think this game has any type of following that would do that. The title screen music is pretty memorable if you ask me. Throughout the game you have bits of story giving you through text, giving you more background or real intentions of your faction for getting the pods. The VOO for example are a group of people wanting to liberate their island from the oppression of other countries that go there to steal from them. The more you go through the game, you start seeing that they start wanting to abuse the power the pods have, like extorting other countries for money, cars and infinite gas. After you defeat everyone, I was really happy to see that they actually had the endings again. Aliens come down to earth and do whatever your faction's wish was. We know that you are freedom fighters. Your people have been exploited for generations by the governments and corporations of your planet. They have plundered your tiny island of its precious resources and you have been left with nothing. We will rectify the situation. No one will ever harm you or your homeland again. So yeah, they even give you the twisted endings. Of course I watch them on YouTube because I only have a week, but it gives you a reason to replay the game over and over again. I would argue that even more than Twisted Metal for having so much lore in between levels. Overall, I really liked this one. It was very unexpected considering my expectations, but it's definitely one of my favorites game in the genre and I would definitely recommend playing it. Even if you're like me and is turned down by an underwater game, Trust me, it is worth giving it a try. And I guess that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, it really helps me a lot. And if you have any tips on games like this, let me know in the comments, I'm gonna need it. But anyway, I'll see you in the next one, take care.